So thank you so much. Welcome to Tips, Trends, and Tools to Drive Your DTC Results, presented by Community Benchmark in partnership with Commerce 7. I'm Tessa Davies. I'm Commerce 7's Growth and Event Marketing Manager, and I'm joined today by John Callagher, founder of Community Benchmark. Uh, we've been putting on these expert partner webinars for quite a while now, and in order to provide free quality content and maintain the great relationships we have with partners such as Community Benchmark. We're very happy that you've all joined us today. Uh, before we get started, just a few items. We are recording this webinar and we will send it by email following the event. Uh, so if you don't want to take notes, you don't have to. Uh, there is a Q&A box. Feel free to jot down some questions throughout the presentation. We'll have plenty of times to get into uh, Q&A after John's presentation. I won't delay us any further. Take it away, John. Thanks, Tessa. All right, party people. You probably weren't expecting this, but I want you to imagine that we're all on a plane trip to Hawaii, right? So you've got your team there. Commerce 7 is so happy with all of us that they're flying us all to Hawaii, right? So we're on the plane, we're celebrating, we're having a good time. And the pilot pulls you aside, tugs you by the shirt and says, hey buddy, listen, I've got good news and I've got bad news. The bad news is our gauges aren't really working. I'm not really sure how much progress we've made. I'm frankly not even sure how much fuel we have left. But the good news is, and he drops this on you halfway across the ocean, the good news is, we're making great time. The point is, is that um, sometimes success feels like this, a bit chaotic, out of control, unpredictable. But I don't want to feel like this. I wouldn't get back on this plane. I imagine you don't like to feel like this either, wouldn't get back on this plane. Maybe you are feeling like this sometimes, in, in your tasting room. But I think we can all agree that we would prefer to have a better gauge on our progress, where we are, where we're headed, and be more, uh, be more predictable with our success. That's why we're here today. We're super excited about this innovative partnership with Commerce 7. I'm, um, I'm John, I'm the founder of Community Benchmark. Uh, I'm in beautiful Mendocino County, about an hour and a half north of where Nick is uh, in downtown uh, Napa. Um, he'll, be, he'll be manning the chat today. And so please pipe in with questions and all that. Um, Nick and I have been numbers guys our whole lives. We met through wine. It's, 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 a quite, it's quite romantic, I know. Um, he's been in the industry his whole life. I moved to Mendocino about a, uh, a year after I decided to um, ship my last uh, software product off into bigger and more capable hands. Um, but the point is, we're here today to get a better gauge on what's going on with our D2C operation. Let's stop spending so much time gathering the information, putting it in the right format, and let's reallocate reallocate the time that we've been spending gathering information towards analyzing and actioning the data. We believe that having sound gauges, benchmarks, what's going on with your tasting room is fundamental to success. What is Community Benchmark? We're an online uh, uh, D2C reporting suite, dare I say set of gauges that helps you better understand your D2C trends, more quickly and easily see exactly what's going on, and ultimately identify growth opportunities and set better goals. A goal set properly is a goal 50% achieved. We're working with over 450 wineries up and down the West Coast currently. For those of you that uh, we may not be in your region yet, we get there through your regional wine association uh, hint, hint. So would love introductions to uh, any of your regional wine association members to come into your, uh, to your region and help you guys out as well. The bottom line is we help the most ambitious wineries be their best version of themselves. And we know that with, community, uh, with Commerce 7, we have a community of innovators here that we're very excited to tap into. And the fact that you're here today I'm gonna to go ahead and call you a double innovator 
And it's why we're really excited that over the course of the next 20 minutes, I'm gonna, we're gonna dig into really quickly, what can we learn from current trends, especially amongst the top performers? And then we'll do a little demo about what uh, you as a Commerce 7 user will now get for free as a result of this um, unprecedented partnership. And obviously there's a link at the bottom of, of the screen and each screen where you can go find out more. So last thing I'll say is, I know we had this book for 45 minutes. I'm going to be very respectful of your time. It's going to be uh, very value packed. We're going to rock it through this. I would just ask that we stop multitasking, put the phones away, and let's tune in for the next 20 minutes because it's going to be a fun ride. Okay. So let's start by showing you through September of this year, across all 450 of our wineries, the average D2C growth compared to last year, same time period, 6.6%. When we look at the top 20%, the average growth amongst those folks is almost six times that at 35%. Year over year, year to date, through September, total D to C, every dollar collected through your tasting room, club, phone, online, and all the D to C channels. Yeah, so John, begs, maybe uh, if I can chime in, right? I want to point out with the top 20%, that these are established wine brands, wine businesses, right? Because when I first saw this number, I was like, oh, this is probably just packed full of those smaller, you know, newer wineries with more room to grow. Yeah, good point. Yeah, both of these, the, the, the average size of both of these segments is about $2 million total D to C through September. So to Nick's point, this, these are established wineries that are doing something different. And that's what we're here to explore a little bit of today. What is it? What can we learn from these folks? And obviously, when we look at the total DTC picture, we want to break down it, the pie, right? What percentage is done across each channel or the donut, as it were? We prefer the donut here. Um, uh, not that, not, nothing against pies. But uh, the point here that was striking for us is that the revenue breakdown D to C, whether you're top 20 or average, strikingly similar. And Nick's going to put this in the chat, but I think it's fairly memorable. Okay, 30% uh, tasting room, 40% club shipments, 15% on the phones and online. So call that digital. And then about 10% through events and other channels. 30, 40, 15, 10. Now, the, the, the important question for us is, well, first of all, do we even know what percentage, <laughs> do we know what percentage of our D2C is done in the tasting room? Maybe more importantly would be, if you do know that, uh, how do you compare and what does that mean for your operation? So for example, let's say you're a million dollar winery through September, the benchmark here would say, have you done 150K in, online and on the phones? That's that 15% against the million total D to C. And if you haven't, that's probably a growth opportunity for you. That's for you guys to decide. But this is the value of what we do, asking questions that we might not otherwise ask, getting more information around questions that we are currently asking. For example, how to grow. And you might say, John, I think I'm fairly normal. How should I grow in an environment where visitation's declining? Right? So for the last three months, July through September, uh, the West Coast has seen a decline in visitation of 15% compared to the same three months last year. So you're probably asking yourself, okay, well, how can I grow given that my, my main uh, funnel through is, is declining. And I'm going to get back to the donuts, but we're going to look at them slightly differently. So these are the same donuts we just looked at, but now we're looking at growth percentages. So you can see the relative size, you know, the, we're still in that 30, 40, 15, 10, but now we're seeing how much each channel has grown based on whether you're top 20 or the average. 
And you might ask yourself, okay, so if we're going to dig into top performers and figure out what we can learn from them, what's the channel or area that would be most fruitful, that would be the biggest bang for our buck? If you have, if you have an answer to that, feel free to type it into chat and Nick, um, uh, please note who's the first one because they'll, they'll get a prize. Um, but uh, yeah, so like which channel would you wanna dig into which would have the biggest impact? Just, just quantitatively speaking, what's the biggest donut slice that's the biggest differentiator amongst the top 20%? We getting anything, Nick? Uh, yeah. Nothing in Slow the chat. Typers this morning. <laughs> okay. Oh, Claire, we got Claire said events. Adam Club. There you go. Yeah. No, so to, in all fairness, Claire, it, it would be great to dig into all these, but if we were to pick the one that's going to represent the biggest dollar amount, it looks to us a lot like it's club, right? Because club shipments is our biggest channel at 40%, and it's grown nearly 50% amongst the top 20% compared to the more modest 8% growth in uh, uh, overall. So what are people doing with their clubs that are driving this, that 35%, that six times average growth? Quick note here. Yes, club shipments is 40%, but we all know well and good that a non-trivial percentage of the rest of our donut, dollars spent in the tasting room, phone online, and events, are club members as, as well. So, John, any chance you know what percentage of that beyond shipment spending is happening? Nick, I'm so glad you asked. Um, I actually have that prepared. Oh, so, what a fun coincidence. Oh, I love this correspondence. <laughs> so, so, so here we are, and we can see that 70% of the dollars spent on average, whether you're, again, regardless of whether it was everyone or top 20%, amazingly similar 70% of the dollars spent in your D2C operation come from a club member. Or to put it differently, new visitors, uh, non-club members are responsible for 30%. So this is a benchmark for you, right? What, um, what does this mean for your winery? How do you feel about it? What might you wanna change about it? Regardless, the point is, as the headline says, the importance of club. Club is very important. This is an area that we're seeing the biggest differentiation amongst the top 20%. What can we, what can we learn? Well, we've learned a lot already around just, again, we're doing top down. So we're getting more and more granular, more and more actionable. And that's what we do. Um, you can see that it's, it's really, let's see what's happening in the club. Okay, so for starters, You can see that uh, the top 20% have grown their clubs. And sorry, this is through September. That's a bad label there. Through September, the top 20% have grown their club, their total club dollars. So not just shipments, but everything across every channel. The total club dollars has grown almost 40% amongst the top 20% compared to the 8% average. This is another benchmark for us at home following along, right? Have If we've grown our total club revenue dollars by 8%, we're totally on par. The more we get towards upwards towards this 40%, the more we get into that upper quartile or top 20%. Maybe you don't know this number because it's a pain in the butt to calculate it. We've got something for that, but just give me a, uh, a couple minutes. Okay. Top-down analysis. Club grew 40% between 40 and 8, depending on if you're average or top 20. Okay, what are the two factors that drive club growth? And from a number standpoint, it's membership and it's revenue per. And so you can see the top 20% have grown their membership this year. Okay, so um, whatever, well, I'm not going to do the math in, in front of everybody right now, but whatever, whatever the number was at the beginning of the year, it's now 1632, which is 12%. So the point is, is have you grown your club four or 12%? Have you grown your revenue per member six or 22%? And again, these give us the parameters for which uh, 
you could define success and determine uh, exactly where your winery sits and where the biggest growth opportunity is for your operation. Stick with me here. I'm going to go a couple layers deeper. So I hope, uh, I don't know, uh, I hope everyone's um, on board with that. But uh, what I'm going to show you is when you think about membership growth, there's two factors that drive membership growth. So these are the same numbers we just saw, right? The top 20% have grown their club 12%. Um, what are the two factors that drive membership growth? Acquisition and attrition. And, and real quick, John, because there's a question I just wanted to answer live. Um, is the revenue per member per order or the lifetime revenue? So the revenue it's, per member that's is- a great, That's a great question. It's the total amount of revenue per member achieved this year through September. So both in the shipments they may have received and the additional spending that they've done. Yes. Yeah, great question. Keep them coming. Okay, so, so acquisition attrition. How much are you signing up new club members? That's your acquisition. So uh, new club members divided by your club members at the beginning of the year. If you had 1,000 uh, club members at the beginning of the year, and now you have 1,200 and, well, that's not quite right because it's new club members. If you signed up 230 new club members this year, then you're top 20%. And if you've signed up 190 or 19%, then you're, then you're on par. Again, guardrails for success. Attrition. This is the other part where we can see top performers, right? They're, they're working it at both ends. That's why their club has grown so much more because they are acquiring new club members faster. And they are also retaining existing members uh, better. So um, the attrition is kind of the same thing. So uh, how many club members have you lost this year? Uh, and so, for example, on that same thousand member club, if you've lost 120 members this year, uh, then that and, and or less, you're top 20%. Does this bring up any more questions, Nick? No, just someone was uh, curious about the slide. So we'll, if, uh, we'll make the slides available. For sure, for sure. Um, and actually, there's a lot more than that that's available too. And we'll show that in a second because you can actually have, as a Commerce 7 member, you can have your own dashboard and go through all this stuff dynamically with your numbers right next to these. So I'll show that in a, a second. Better. It's a lot better than the slides. <laughs> so, um, so, okay, so back where we were, right? We're, okay, how did people grow their club 40%? Well, they grew their membership 12 by doing these numbers on acquiring and retaining. And then in terms of the revenue per member, how did we grow that more? And, and this really should fully answer the question, which is we, rev, total revenue per member is how much you do shipments regularly scheduled versus how much do you do beyond the shipment? And of course, you can see superior growth uh, uh, in the top 20% channel. But here's the benchmark that I, I really, I just came up with this. Nick, you haven't seen this before, so I think you're going to be excited. I just came up with this like an hour ago when I was looking at this and thinking about a benchmark for you all. How many cents on the shipping dollar are we achieving outside of our shipments, right? So for every dollar we're shipping to club members, how much are we achieving uh, in beyond shipment? Those dollars that club members visit the taste room online phone. And here's your, here's your guardrails again for success. Are you getting, you know, and just to make it memorable, are you getting 50 cents? Are you getting 50 cents engagement from your club members for every dollar that you're shipping to them. And that should give you a gauge on not only um, uh, if, if that could be a growth opportunity for you, but also you can quantify that, right? You can look up how many dollars you're shipping and you can take that metric and take half of it and say, okay, this is how much revenue we should be getting from our club members outside of the shipment. That's, this, is the, this is the standard. And why are we above or below? What can we learn and do differently? And just real quick for clarification, when we talk about shipment, those could be like uh, pickup members as well, right? So we're just talking about the pre-committed wine club shipments in whatever form they're delivered. 
Yep, that's a great that's a great clarification. When we say shipment, we mean the regularly scheduled um, uh, commitments that people sign up for, regardless of the delivery mechanism. Might be a better name for that. We're open to suggestions. <laughs> okay, and then the last, this is the last slide before we'll show you some real magic. This slide was particularly interesting to me because it shows that we call it club AOV, average order value, or the revenue per shipment. Okay, so on, on average, when you ship to a club member, whether they pick it up or not, um, how many dollars is that or how are you growing that? And we found this to be a really big driver uh, of the growth of the top 20%. They're finding a really great way to, uh, to increase the value that their club members are taking in shipments. Yeah, and, and kind of real quick, maybe a couple you know thoughts out there on this, right? I know all of you have the ability to do custom clubs, right? So that's one of the levers we see wineries pulling. Um, you know, a couple other options, you know, adding bottles to shipments, um, kind of the pre-selected. Um, but also the big one, I think wineries or the frontline staff sometimes shy away from is leading with those, like the, the bigger club options. Um, but just kind of throwing out a couple things maybe to, to take back to the team on, hey, how do we get that 20% growth and what are some levers to pull? That's why we pay Nick the big bucks. So um, I think you can see the analysis that we've done here, right? So two segments, top 20% all, uh, look at the D to C donut, uh, look at where the biggest growth is, unpack the layers of the onion to get down to a very uh, granular number here. And that's, that's the process that we can do with you now uh, as a member of Commerce 7 and, and, and based on this partnership, you can, you can sign up for free and get this dashboard or dashboards or gauges set up. And I'm going to show you just a quick minute of what that looks like here. Okay, so we're in a community benchmark dashboard. And you can... And this is really cool. The, for the very first time, we have a ton of filters. We have, so all these 450 wineries, you can slice and dice a million different ways, price point, et cetera. For Commerce 7 users, for the first time, we're opening up all of our regional filters. So you could actually just click, say, Napa and see the average for Napa. You could click, you know, just Oregon and see the average for Oregon. So this is a unique uh, a, a unique bit of functionality for Commerce 7 users that you can come in here, you can open these filters and you can surf and see averages across all regions. And so for example, for this time, I am showing you, we're just, we've got all selected here. This is all 450, you can see the number down there. This is all 450 wineries. And then what I'm looking at is I'm seeing that same 30, 40. So this is that. So we're looking at the average amongst all 450 tasting rooms. 30% of that revenue was done tasting room. About 40% was done through club shipments. And here's that 15 online and so forth. We've seen those numbers already. And actually, here's the growth percentages over here. You can see that all amongst these, all 450 tasting rooms have grown 10. Uh, shipments about 14. We've seen these numbers already. Everybody's down online, but we've seen these numbers before. The magic of your now ability to, uh, to, to, to use Community Benchmark automatically and for free through this partnership is that you can see your numbers right next to the industry standards. And imagine what kind of growth opportunities and conversations you could inspire by having this at your fingertips. And that's what we want. We want you to have this basic information quickly and easily so that you can, again, not have to spend so much time um, formatting and gathering. And we want you to spend your time, uh, again, analyzing and actioning. So um, there's, as you saw, we can go a lot deeper. We're just looking at revenue by channel. We can go deeper into a uh, tasting room and look at conversion rates. 
uh, average order values online. We've got different, I'm not, we're not gonna go through all the buttons right now, but I, I hope you um, are inspired to go ahead and check this out and see what kind of conversations could be answered or brought up. Uh, one more thing on the benchmarking that I'll show you. It's a really cool opportunities page. This is a bit magical where we can actually quantify the size of the prize so that you can prioritize. You can see this winery here flat on the average spend in their AOV. If they had grown at the same rate as their peers, it would have been worth $118,000 to them. So again, this is a really cool feature. You can quantify the size of the prize. And then, you know, as small businesses, we have so much to do, but what's the one or two things we can do that can move the needle the most? And this page can help you with that. You might be saying to yourself, okay, very cool, John. I like the benchmarking. That sounds like fun. Can't wait. I'm already signing up. There's more. We have a new product that helps you visualize your own numbers. Maybe you're just like, what happened yesterday? What happened last week? You come up here into the snapshot tool, okay? And you can have right across the top of the page, you can have customized badges for whatever metrics you want, right? Right now we're looking at that tasting room AOV that we've been talking about. We can see that it's down uh, a little bit from same time period last year. We can pick whatever time period we want. We can customize these badges. Maybe, maybe we don't want AOV up there. And it goes away. Revenue by channel. Very, very, very easy to view here. And, and of course, customizable as well. And uh, you can look at it in different views. You can export it. Again, making it quick and easy to see what the heck's going on. And finally, uh, the last thing I'll show you is we've got these great sales by leaderboards down here where you can see, for example, looks like Zinfandel is our top seller or looks like, I'm not surprised, is that Nick, our top seller? Did you change that right before the presentation, Nick? Anyway, um, the, the, the point here is, again, let's get basic gauges in place so that we can have uh, the simple conversations already already done and let's move on to talking about what to do about what's happening what goals to set how to set them how to rally the team etc so i hope that you've seen uh, a good flavor of what we can offer again it's for free you just need to go to communitybenchmark.com slash c7 free uh, you can claim your account there and we'll get you all set up with everything you just saw and then we can, again, get away from uh, the time waste and into uh, the promised land where we have gauges that are working and, and we don't have to feel like maybe you would on that plane where things feel super chaotic and um, unpredictable. Well, John, a couple of good questions on um, regions beyond the West Coast. So we have some, at least one, if not a few, um, I think users in Canada, and then questions kind of Texas, Midwest, et cetera. So. Yeah, great. So if you're not, I mean, again, everything's available to you that we've shown today, regardless of where you are located. Um, and that's why we turned on all the regional filters. So um, it can be very helpful for you to just say, you know what, just give me everybody. We've got down to Temecula, all the way up to Washington, lots of Napa. It, it will be valuable for you to see how you compare to the West Coast. I'm not going to lie and say that it would be even more valuable if we could actually have significant participation in your region. And when we do so, we'll turn that region on as well. And again, the way that that actually happens is through the Regional Wine Association. We're launching in Woodenville next week, for example, through the Woodenville Wine Association. Um, and then the last thing I would say is that even if the benchmarking piece feels um, uh, like you know, you're not sure about it, that snapshot tool where you can just get the daily or weekly download of what's going on um, should be, of course, valuable regardless of who you're trying to compare to. So those are my thoughts there. I hope I answered the question.
How are we doing on time? We started at, okay. We're doing great. Yeah, it's 1030, got 15 minutes to do some more Q&A if people have more specific questions. Yeah, totally. I mean, we're we're happy to hang out. If you've got to go, that's great too. Um, but like I said, the main thing is just go to C7 free and claim the account. We'll get you set up with everything that you saw. You can try it out. Uh, and um, and again, start start making some progress on uh, getting those gauges in place. So we're happy to hang out. Um, I don't know if there's any more questions, Nick. Um, so we'll chill. But, um, but hopefully this was a valuable use of your time. We're very excited at the possibility of starting to help and, and work with you. I'm going to stop the share. Did we get all the questions? Oh, I didn't. Miss. Thanks for asking. There's one. Um, someone asking about Finger Lakes. So we do not currently have stats on the Finger Lakes. I see that. Yeah. But a good reason to chat with some of your neighbors. Uh, we're actually, uh, Commerce 7 is in conversation with the Finger Lakes uh, Winery Association. Uh, so we might be doing a uh, Winery Association seminar in partnership with Wise Academy and Community Benchmark. Uh, and usually when we uh, don't have the, the stats, John, uh, you, you, what would you put together for a presentation if we didn't have the, the exact data for Finger Lakes? I would probably still talk about some of the trends that we're seeing here on the West Coast, but I would also probably talk a little bit more about best practices that, that are helpful. Um, mm -hmm. So a question from Jamie at LaCole. Hey, Jamie, uh, so you're already, you're already with us. Uh, and so awesome. Um, you're in Walla Walla and we already have a partnership with Walla Walla Wine Alliance there. Actually, I'm coming to visit in two or three weeks, uh, Jamie. So um, uh, you don't need to do anything really if you're already a member. Uh, I would, although I would recommend, uh, go ahead and send an email to uh, support at communitybenchmark.com. Um, Nick, if you could type that in there. But just send an email to support at Community Benchmark and just say, hey, I'm a C7 user. Hook me up with all the free stuff um, and, uh, and we'll get you taken care of. Perfect. Yeah. And Jamie, I'll take care of that for you. So don't even, but oh. if anybody else is a current user, support at Community Benchmark. I'm making sure I spell it correctly. I'll put it in the chat. Um, and uh, LaCole's also in, in Woodenville. They have a second location. So. We're going to be doubling up their their insights. Cool. Um, so William, uh, I'm not sure where you're coming from, William, but uh, he's asking about. Um, uh, well, it went away, but it was something about. Uh, is oh, sorry, I I moved it. It says our club sales increases more bottles or more dollars per bottle. We don't have insight to that yet. But uh, that's a great question, and we know, and, and we're happy to hear it because it's definitely on our roadmap to add in. But for the time being, it's uh, we we stick at that AOV level and haven't quite got down to the the bottle level, but we're getting close. Cool. Is there one more? No, those finger lights. Uh, John, did you want me to launch the uh, results from the icebreaker? Sure. That's awesome. Okay, so we've got about maybe about 10 to 15% doing daily, weekly. Um, most people are doing monthly, annually. And 20% aren't, aren't setting goals. Okay. That sounds about right. Cool. And 96% uh, uh, filled this out. So we're only missing one person uh, who joined late for this cool. poll. So that's quite accurate.
Are there any other questions at all? Okay, well, if there are no other questions, I just want to thank John and Nick of Community Benchmark for taking time out of their day today to present to all of us. Thank you so much, you guys. Uh, like I mentioned at the start, uh, I will be sending out a follow-up email. I'll include a link to this recording, also a PDF link of uh, John's slides, and uh, also a link to this uh, free offer and any other information John wants to share with you. So if you have any questions at all, you can follow up with John uh, or support at communitybenchmark.com. Thank you so much, everyone.